Hey everybody, it's me, Pastor Ron of Grace Bible Ministries. I uh, want to do a quick video on um, the title of this playlist is, is Grace for the Guilty. And so I wanted to put together a message with that title. And uh, I also wanted to take the opportunity of this message to create uh, a telegram group with the same name, Grace for the Guilty. And so I established that. And if you wanted to, you know, get in touch with me um, and, and go into a little bit more detail or flesh out some questions you might have, or just the fellowship around the gospel, then I'm going to attach a link. Uh, of course, you have to be a member. You have to have downloaded the app and be a part of Telegram, but um, it's pretty simple to do. And uh, anyway, so you can join me and we can just fellowship or, or, or connect through that app in a, in a little bit more depth and detail. So that's why I'm doing this uh, video and it's going to be a little, hopefully a quick video. Grace for the Guilty is the title of it. And um, so let's talk about those terms, Grace for the Guilty. And I thought we would look at Ephesians chapter 2 and start about verse 4 and go to verse 8. So let's read that scripture and uh, unpack it. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We'll go to verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the concept of grace for the guilty um, is, I wanted to make a, 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 um, a playlist that, that dealt with the issue of salvation. And the first issue we need to realize is that we're all guilty of violating the law of God. So notice in this passage, uh, God who is rich in mercy, that's the first thing we want to understand here. God is abundant. He's rich in mercy. And mercy is essential for the sinner because mercy is is giving you uh, healing, something that you, um, I've got it backwards actually, grace is getting when you receive something you don't deserve, and mercy is when you don't receive what you do deserve. So a criminal who comes and throws himself, uh, you've heard the phrase, uh, the mercy of the court, um, he is appealing to the judge not to give him what he deserves for his crime. So notice this, God is rich in mercy. He is rich in mercy. And that means we've sinned a lot. We need a God who's rich in mercy. And we have sinned a lot. And our very nature is of sin. It's what we do instinctively, naturally from birth. But praise God, God who is rich in mercy. Why? For his great love wherewith he loved us. So we see that the riches of his mercy are extended, are the fruit of his love for us. It's a manifestation of love with a, the great love, the agape love that, that, that the Father has, that God has for us. Uh, it says, um, uh, for God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. Now, this is the, the point here of the guilty. We were dead in sins. Everyone has sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 1 John 3, 4 identifies sin as the transgression of the law. So when we transgress or we violate the law of God revealed in the law of Moses, then we transgress that law, that is sin. That's Hamartia is the Greek word for sin. It means to miss the mark. So God's holiness is here. Our sin is here and we cannot bridge the gap. We can never be as holy as God or righteous as God because once you've sinned one time, then you are unrighteous. You're either righteous or you're unrighteous. And the moment you sin, you're no longer righteous. It doesn't matter if you kill one person or 100 people. You are a murderer. And that's how we are. We're, we're sinners. We've all transgressed the law of God. And the scripture says here uh, that we were dead 
in sins. And death is spiritual separation, or fundamentally it is separation. Death is separation. Physical death is when the spirit of man departs from the body and the body collapses into the dirt and goes back to the dust of the ground. But the consciousness, the spirit, the inner man, the immaterial real you continues on eternally. The question is, in what state will you abide in uh, eternally? Will you abide in glory? Will you receive glory through the Lord Jesus Christ? Or will you receive condemnation for the sins you've committed? Well, it depends if you receive the mercy and grace of God, which is what we're talking about. So, so the Bible says here in Ephesians 2, 5, even when we were dead in sins, we were dead in sins. Um, that means we were separated, separated from God, spiritually separated from God. And every human being, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, is separated from God from birth because of sin. And so the scripture here says, even when we were dead in sins, that God loved us with a great love and extended mercy available to us even when we were dead in sins. You know, it goes back to like Romans chapter, uh, Romans 4, that, that, that Christ died for the ungodly and for the sinner. Even when we are in a state of ungodliness and, and sinful rebellion, God still manifested his great love for us. And that's part of the reason why now we know the love of God is not just, uh, you know, a meager supply, but it is an infinite love, an unspeakable love, an abounding, super abounding love that expresses itself in mercy and grace, which was demonstrated in the cross of Jesus Christ in a very tangible expression of that mercy. So we see that God is rich in mercy because of his great love that he loved with wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins and hath quickened us made us alive together with Christ for by grace are you saved. Now we see a glimpse in the in the broader definition of salvation. Salvation is fundamentally deliverance uh, and in the context of eternal salvation, it is deliverance from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, and ultimately from the very presence of sin when we receive our glorified bodies. But notice this, God summarizes salvation here as to be quickened together with Christ. Quickened means to be made alive. We are quickened, born again, made alive uh, with Christ and that is salvation. And how do we receive it? By grace. It's a free gift. Grace is for the guilty, not for the righteous. Uh, it is uh, a free gift. Salvation is a free gift received by grace. So we see here that phrase, by grace are you saved. And God hath raised us up together. Notice this word together. And made us sit together together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is an expression of our salvation, folks. Once you have been saved, you are joined in spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore this word together comes into play. He has quickened, God has quickened us together with Christ, raised us up together with Christ, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. This is our position in Christ, and it is all by grace. And this grace is for the guilty, it's not icing on the cake of self-righteousness, you know, a bonus because we were so good. No, it is for those who are dead in their sins who receive it by faith. We're going to see that in a second. You receive grace by faith, not by works. If you work for it, it's no longer grace. It's a, it's, it's a, a, a wage that you receive. It's, it's an indebtedness that God would have to give you. But grace is unmerited favor. And the, uh, the acrostic or the acronym G-R-A-C-E God's riches at Christ's expense. And we see here one of the riches that God has is mercy. God will give you mercy, sinner, if you'll just simply receive it. It's a free gift. Now let's continue. It says, verse 7, Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. So now we see that God is rich in mercy. Uh, and now we see the exceeding riches of his grace. Folks, these are the true riches. It's not silver and gold and the material possessions of this world. By the way, just a reminder, uh, there are no U-Hauls um, uh, following hearses, right? 
You cannot take it with you. Um, the riches and the wealth of this world cannot secure and save your soul. But these are the true riches that are of God, the riches of his mercy and the exceeding riches of his grace. And so our salvation, we will be trophies of grace to glorify Jesus Christ that in the ages to come, God the Father might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. So we see that the very conduit through which salvation, the grace and mercy of God are transferred from, from the cross of Jesus Christ and the, the sacrifice and, that he made 2,000 years ago and his resurrection the grace and the, and the mercy that are appropriated there are, are directly accessed by the individual sinner, the one who's dead in their sins. It is accessed by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing. You simply believe that God has administered this mercy and grace in the person work of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. That he was buried. And then he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You see, that is the summary of the work of God in Jesus Christ, offering the sacrifice of his own son that perfectly satisfied his wrath against our sins. Jesus Christ was punished in our place. Christ died on the cross for our sins, for our sins, my sin, your sin. And he was buried and he was raised from the dead. And that is the, the, the substance of our hope, the substance of our salvation together with Christ. So when you believe the gospel by faith, you simply receive it by faith, you receive the grace of God, the grace of God, the riches of his grace, his unmerited favor, the riches of Christ, those riches are transferred to your account and you have salvation. It's that simple. Now religion tries to conceal this because religion uh, religion loves to control and, and f frankly get wealthy off of the, uh, the those who are ignorant about God's ways. And most people are ignorant of God's ways because they they form some other system how to try and appease God and bring, bring about salvation. And it's by grace through faith. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. See, religion is of yourself. Religion, it gives you, it, it's, it's, it's the, be, the best you you can be, your best life now. Uh, religion is by definition of yourself. It's a legalistic uh, set of rules uh, that, a, that a religious person tries to obey, uh, thinking that by obedience to those rules that you're uh, satisfying God's anger and that the scales of justice will balance out. And at the end, of, when you die, you'll have uh, more good works than bad and you'll go into heaven. Well, that's that's, a, that's error. That's a deceptive lie that most people believe. In fact, it's built into us. We think we... Uh, the good people go to heaven, the bad people go to hell. No, those we're all bad people. We're all ungodly. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Jesus Christ will save everyone, all who simply come to him in faith and believe. So it is by grace that we're saved, the riches of his grace, through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. See, it's a gift of God, not a reward for the righteous, but a gift for the guilty, grace for the guilty. It is the gift of God. Salvation is a free gift that comes from God to anyone who believe. And the problem with most people is they won't believe that. I don't believe that. That's the whole point. You won't believe it, and therefore you won't receive grace. You continue to work for a wage from God, and you cannot. The wages of sin is death, and you've sinned. And the Bible says all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So everything you're, if you could condense your top five things, that you would boast in and yourself and show them to God and say, this is why I should get into heaven. The Bible says all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And so when we, we do that, we're asking for a wage, then, then that wage, the wages of sin is death. And that would be eternal separation, like a fire. When you die, it's too late to, to change a reverse course or to, to receive the free gift, what I mean, to reverse course, to receive the free gift by faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of works. Salvation is not of works, okay? Being quickened together with Christ is not of works. 
Being raised up together with Christ is not of your works, it's not of yourself. Being made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus is not of works, it's not of yourself. It is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Do you see that? We're created a new creature in Christ Jesus. We are a workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The summary of the Christian life, how we live our lives, is we we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and we love one another. And the salvation comes by the believing in Jesus Christ. Uh, loving one another is not a prerequisite to eternal life. Rather, it's the fruit of it. As we grow in maturity in the grace of Jesus Christ, we see the love that he has for us. That loosens up and softens our heart over time, and we begin to reflect that love to other people. And um, it's not an emotional thing or a feeling. It is a transformative work over the, the lifespan of the believer. Uh, that as we feed our spirit on the word of God, we're transformed into his likeness and we begin to express the good works, the fruit of the spirit that that produces love and, and all the wonderful uh, attributes of love. But growth is not guaranteed to the believer. We have to nurture ourselves in the word of God and be nurtured up and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. But that has nothing to do with our salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, I don't want this to be very long, and, and I feel like if I continue, it will be very long. Let me just conclude by saying, um, the Philippian jailer came trembling and fell in before Paul and Silas. After a great earthquake, God uh, shook the jail in which Paul and Silas were, were bound for preaching the gospel. Their chains fell, fell off, the doors were opened to the jail, the jailer came in trembling, said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that's the question that we all must have answered in truth. And we, we need to ask that question and find the true answer to that question. Paul's answer found in Acts 16, verse 30 and 31 says, Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. Now Paul went and preached the gospel in, in the home of this Philippian jailer and they believed, they all believed and they they received eternal life. They received salvation. They were, they were um, quickened together with Christ. By grace, they were saved. And that's how you do it. And why do I keep going on about it? It's so simple. Well, the problem is it's so simple, people stumble over it. And so you really have to kind of beat the drum consistently until it really penetrates the heart and, and the Spirit of God has time to work and, and, and ruminate uh, and brood over that in our heart and bring up the, the fragrance of Christ where we understand what that means to believe. Just believe it. That's so simple. And, and our flesh recoils at that. And our own instinctive uh, hardwiring because of the fall rejects that. So anyway, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And the grace of God is for the guilty. It's for the guilty. Jesus said, I didn't come... Uh, those, who are, those who are healthy don't need the physician, but they who are sick... Jesus said, uh, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And repentance means to change your mind. Uh, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Change your mind. What are you clinging to? Why are you refusing to simply believe in Christ? There's some reason in your heart and mind why you won't do that. Why you reject the message. Repent of that. It's that simple. Repent. Change your mind and believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and was raised from the dead. That is the atoning work that will satisfy God's wrath against your sin. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I'm going to put a link in the, the uh, description, and you click on that link, and that will get you into our new group called Grace for the Guilty. And uh, hopefully we can continue to dialogue there, and especially if there's something I said that needs clarifying or even correcting. Feel free to go in there and... and uh, dialogue with me. Okay, that's all I got. God bless. Bye.